Being able to use other people's materials in your own work is important, but what about what you want to do with your own outputs? A common question regarding copyright is what can I do with my own work? Since October 2017, there's been a requirement for Cambridge PhD students to deposit an open access copy of their thesis in Apollo, the university's institutional repository. This is connected to the rise in open research practices embraced by both research funders and institutions with the aim of making the results of publicly funded work more widely available. Open access has several benefits for researchers, including complying with funder mandates, enhancing the reputation of the individual author, date stamping outputs to protect against plagiarism and providing long-term preservation. However, this sharing also makes it important to pay attention to any third-party materials you might be using as you prepare your thesis, as this online sharing means that educational exceptions no longer apply and permission to use materials must be sought from the copyright holder. It's important to address a couple of concerns that people often have about this area. Sharing your thesis open access won't stop more formal publication of your results. Publishers understand that you're subject to mandates from publishers and will work with you on this. It's also worth noting that open access publication can help to showcase your work to potential publishers. If sharing is going to present a real issue, then it might be possible to embargo or restrict access to your thesis for a specified period. But please note that this is the exception rather than the rule. Another area which causes confusion is the use of copyright protected images in a thesis. Again, the rules differ depending on whether the thesis is produced for purely educational reasons or whether it's published in some way. Publishing a thesis online is counted as commercial publication, so you need to obtain permission to use images where you do not own the copyright. There are some key questions to consider when using images. Think about why you're using the image and whether you really need to include it. There's little point spending time and effort to obtain the rights to an image that you don't really need to use. Remember that the creator of the image and the copyright holder may be two different entities. For example, an individual photographer may have taken a photo under contract to a museum, meaning that the museum is the copyright holder. A lot of people assume that if they took a photo themselves, then they are the copyright holder, but this is only partly true. Whilst the photographer may own the copyright to their image, they may not own the copyright to the subject of that image, such as a painting or a sculpture. Remember that each item will have layers of copyright and multiple copyright holders, which you will need to navigate. If there are people in a photograph you've taken, you'll also need to be careful, especially if you've taken any images of children or vulnerable adults. If the people are identifiable, you'll need to gather their permission before you can share the image in any way. If you decide that including the images is not possible, then the main source open to you is redaction, where the image is removed and replaced with a statement such as image removed for copyright reasons. As long as you include full attribution for any third party images, readers will still be able to refer to the image if they need to. If you're just in need of an image to illustrate something, it's a good idea to look at some of the safe image sharing websites shown on the screen. These have an extensive selection of free to use images, but remember to check the individual licenses applied to any image that you want to use. Once you've completed your thesis, you might want to share it beyond an open access repository and pursue formal publication. Publishers will expect to see evidence that you've cleared the rights to any third party materials you want to use in journal articles or books. And although they often provide guidance, it's something the researcher themselves is ultimately responsible for. When you publish, you're likely to sign a publication agreement detailing this procedure, but it also contains other important information. These are legal documents which set out the rights and responsibilities of both publisher and author, and one element they typically include is where the copyright and the final output will rest. It's common for the publisher to stipulate that the copyright of the output is transferred to them, so it's vital that researchers read these documents carefully to understand what it is that they're agreeing to and ensure that it doesn't conflict with any funder mandates. The agreement will detail which rights the publisher expects in return for sharing your work, any that you retain and what this means in practical terms. Perhaps one of the most important issues here impacts which version of an output a researcher is allowed to share in a repository. This is usually something known as the author accepted manuscript. 
the peer-reviewed version of a work which was accepted for publication but not yet copy edited or typeset. Researchers need to make sure that the copyright transfer agreement and any funder mandates are compatible and also that they're personally happy with the outcome. It's important to remember that this element of a publication agreement can be negotiated if the author isn't happy. Sharing your outputs online is a great way to reach a larger audience and a social media presence can definitely help to let people know that there are new things out there to read. However, before you rush to use popular research sharing sites such as ResearchGate and Academia.edu, it's important to pause and think about copyright. Just because something is openly available online, this does not mean that it's classed as open access. Open access has a very specific set of conditions attached, such as long-term preservation, and many websites don't guarantee this. Sites such as ResearchGate and Academia Edu are commercial websites designed to help the research community build their networks. A natural part of this is wanting to share and discuss outputs, but it's important to check that you have the right to do so. Looking back at publication agreements, you might find that you're restricted as to which version you can share and where you can share it. Although it can be tempted to upload published works to these sites, if you do so, you might find yourself on the end of a legal takedown notice. The safest way to use these sites is to create an entry for your output by adding the metadata but including a link to a legal online version instead of uploading it. This helps to make your research discoverable whilst at the same time keeping your legal basis covered. It's also good practice to credit authors and copyright holders when sharing or talking about the work of others on social media. This helps to ensure that you aren't accidentally taking credit for other people's work and prevents the majority of issues.